Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Um, we've come to the uh, main course now, which is the message of the day. Um, I rarely ever say or do this, but on this course, I'm speaking authoritatively as God's spokesman, as he has given me a word for the church. Um, we're praying that the pandemic will not just subside, but go away. And we believe very strongly it's a manifestation of the kingdom of darkness. But be as much as it is around, um, God has been in the know of it ever since. He's spoken about it, he's been speaking about it the past one to two years. Not necessarily as pandemic, but a form of darkness is coming. And there's a global shutdown of the churches, the walls, not the church. You can't shut down the church of Jesus. It's anywhere that two or three gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus, the church is going on. The church is a living organism. It can never die. It cannot be shut down. But the walls where the church meet has been shut down, which brings the glory of man. The glory of God happens when the prostitutes come and they become holy, when the deaf hear, the blind see, and the lame walk. He said, let men see your good works and let them glorify your Father which is in heaven. So these structures does not glorify God. It glorifies man. So if you see a beautiful cathedral, and you say, oh, that's the pastor of that church, you say, wow. Just like you see a beautiful car, you say, that's the one of that car, you say, wow. Now that glorifies man, which is under test, under assessment, and under verification right now. The church of Jesus is facing an examination. God wants to bring a move on the face of the earth that will restore dignity and honor to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The current church structure on earth has not been able to achieve that. And so God wants to bring the church to a higher level of glory. There's such a high dose of anointing that God wants to pour on the church. There's such a great manifestation of God that wants to happen within the church that will bring the world to its knees. There's a transference. You see all these billions with all these heathens. They will lose some of them in one day, just one day. I remember I was telling a young man, I said, that bank will shut down soon. Why? I saw some principles that were breached concerning the kingdom of God. Nobody believed me. They said, ah, which bank? In uh, less than about four or five months, that bank shut down. I said, God is going to judge that bank. It's going to shut down. And it shut down. That's in Nigeria. You know that God told me to shut down. I could see from the workings of the kingdom, it is heading towards that. Now, people, billionaires, heathens, and godless people, will, some of them will lose their investment in just one day, and God will transfer it to the church. But you know, promotion doesn't just come even when you're in school. They don't just promote you, you write an exam. And when you pass, then you get promoted. You write an exam, and when you do well, you get prices. I remember I, I've been to prize giving day of sc in schools and I, they call a student the prize winner in this course, in this subject, and they give them gifts. God wants to give gifts. All general overseers of all churches all over the world are under the searchlight of the almighty God. All bishops, all pastors, I'm a pastor too. All general overseers, they are, on, they are in an exam hall. The one that fails is doomed. He's finished. His church may never reopen. And if he reopens, it's for disgrace and humiliation. God is testing the church. The church is facing an exam. In this life, 
Nothing is to be dependent on without first testing it. It's a universal principle. So God himself will not depend on anything except it's first tested and proven. The Bible says the word of God is tested seven times. Meaning, if God tells you that I have healed you or have provided for you, before he told you, he tested that word seven times in seven times worse situation that you are in and it worked then he now gave it to you so it must work you can't say like Gehazi told his boss it did not work no 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 and so the church is facing an exam this coronavirus when the exam is over let me tell you categorically the coronavirus will end either through a vaccine or it will just vanish out and nobody will know how it went. Everybody will just notice nobody is having the symptoms again. So how long is this staying for? It's staying for as long as the exam is on. Once the exam is off, the virus is off. In Psalm 17, I'll read from verse 1 to 3. I'll do a little teaching now. And then uh, uh, from time to time, I'll be giving out the mind of God as the Lord inspires me. And like I said earlier on, all general verse years, I'm a pastor of a church. Church is the gracious church. I'm also under an exam. And every bishop or pastor, be careful what they say now. It may be the thin line between continuing ministry and relegated into the dustbin of history. It has nothing, absolutely nothing, to do with the size of the church. It has nothing to do with the titles. It has nothing to even do with past glories. God is assessing ministers, members, children, babies. Even someone that just gave his life to Christ last week is in an exam right now. In Psalm 17, I read from verse 1 to 3. Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry. Give ear to my prayer that goeth not out of faint leaves. Let my sentence come forth from, my pre from thy presence. Let your eyes behold the things that are equal. Verse 3, you have proved, that word proved means tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and you found nothing. God, there's the psalmist says, God has tried me. So God tried the psalmist. People hear of David. Oh, David the great king. No, he didn't just become king. He was tested. He was tried. God tried him. When he passed, God promoted him and made him king. It's our time of promotion. It's our time of lifting. It's our time of exaltation. But we are all in an exam right now. Whether you believe it or not, you are in an exam. Whether you accept it or not, you are in an exam. God told me to tell the church, it doesn't matter how many years you've been in ministry, how established the ministry is, that geo is in an exam. If he passes, he moves to a higher level of glory. If he fails, I don't know what will happen. But some of them, as an act of God's mercy, will be recalled home so that they will not face disgrace. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, Deuteronomy chapter 8, I'll read from verse 1 to 2, and then I'll read verse 16. It says that all the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. You shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee 40 years in the wilderness to humble Alish Kabandos Kataya. There is no challenge. Some are facing challenges of finances because of the pandemic. Some are facing challenges of feeding. A lot of people didn't have food because of the pandemic. Some are facing challenges of security of their job because of, their, uh, of the pandemic. They are all tests. Your response is going to determine whether you move forward or not. Now I continue the Bible reading. 
He led you these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to prove you, to know what was in your heart, whether you will keep his commandments or not. Then in verse 16, God fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers knew not, that he might humble you, that he may test you. So why did he give them manna? To test them, to know who will enter the promised land or not. So when God gave them manna, they thought God was just feeding them, not knowing God was testing. Now, most people don't realize God is testing them. They're just seeing that the pandemic is causing no job, no work, no money. Some are facing health issues. Everybody is being tested, especially in the area of the challenges they are facing. Amen. Now, um, I'll read a few more scriptures just to prove that God tests is in the scripture. Because some of may say, oh, where is it in the Bible that God tests? We looked at Psalm 17, 1 to 3, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Now we're looking at Judges chapter 3. And I'll read from verse 1. I'll read from verse 1 to 4. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at the least such as before knew nothing thereof. Namely, five laws of the Philistines, of the Canaanites, Sidonians, Hivites, dwelled in Mount Lebanon, from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering of the Hamad. Now, these are enemies of Israel, and they hate Israel, and they are killing the Israelites. And God said he left them, in verse 4, to test Israel. So the pandemic is to test the church. Let me make it clear. The pandemic cannot destroy the church. The pandemic is not meant to destroy the church. The pandemic is bringing circumstances to test the church. I'm telling you why the pandemic came. And I'm assuring you, when the test is over, the pandemic will vanish. So they're to prove Israel to know whether they will hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. So when those nations come and they, are, they conquer Israel, now look at this, this is a test. They subject them, now they ask them to serve their gods. And God said, I allow them to conquer you to see whether you will serve their gods or you will serve me. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. And we can go also and look in Exodus 16, 1 to 4. But for time, I'll leave that. In 1 Thessalonians, that's in the New Testament, 1 Thessalonians, I'll read chapter 5, verse 21. Here God says, Proof, test all things and hold on to what is successful. Not successful in what we believe is successful but successful in the fact that it has been tested and it has passed. You know, many times we look at success in the light of men. I remember in the ministry of Jesus, at one time his congregation was 5,000 men beside women and children. It wasn't Corona that caused this own. God shut down his miracle ministry. God, the Almighty, shut down the miracle ministry. Every minister of God, it's a face. I, God instructed me one time to shut down the church, thriving church. I had to shut it down. And for about a year, I was alone reading and studying and learning the ways of God. So this is not strange. It's not, it's not, it's nothing strange. Those who have worked with God at one time or the other have experienced a part of their ministry shut down. He shuts it down. It's part of the procedure 
on the way to Zion. Any minister at one time or the other, his ministry is not sure that will never get to Zion. And they shut down the miracle ministry of Jesus. It was so bad. People came to me and said, ah, ah, Rabbi, show us another miracle. It's taking so long. You have not done any sign. No sign. And he said to them, no other sign shall be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth, and on the third day he shall rise again. That's the only sign left. And at that instance, 5,000 men beside women and children went away. They abandoned his ministry. The miracles not happening drove them away. That shut down. Then he began to preach. I guess in about John 6. He said, my flesh is meat. Eh? And my blood is drink. The 70 said, your flesh is meat, your blood is drink. 70 turned their backs and left. So his ministry depleted from about 20,000. Then dropped to 5,000 or so. Then dropped to 70 plus 12. 82. Then 70 left, dropped to 12. And he said, I'm successful because my father is still with me. He was on call. So... When it depletes like that, it doesn't mean God is not there. No, just that there are some activities God is doing, testing, rearranging, restructuring. And that minister must not call for those people to return. Never. Jesus told the twelve, are you also not going? He mustn't call for his church to begin again if he does. He has failed before the Almighty. Rather, he must walk with the restructuring of God to advance into purpose where all those people are not needed. Amen. So in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, he says, test all things. In Zechariah 39, the same thing. So in school, we undergo tests to qualify us for promotion, and so it is also in the spiritual. In 1 Samuel 17, from verse 32 to 40, David was to confront Goliath, and King Saul gave him an armor. He said, you can't face Goliath with just catapult and stones. There are Goliath in the wall that we must crush. Terrorists. The church must not be at the mercy of terrorists. Never, never. At this new glory, it will not happen. Never, never. There are Goliaths, and we're not going to use swords an armory like King Saul and like the world is used to defeat. We're going to use stones. Things you will never imagine. For David, it was just mere stone. And he brought a whole Goliath and a whole nation of the Philistines down. But you know, he didn't just use stones. They were what he had tested and proven. So in 1 Samuel 17, King Saul told him, he said, David, you want to face Goliath? Use my sword. It's special. They use special weapon, uh, special metal. David said, we don't need metal. No metal can bring down this gun. You know, in the book of Daniel, Daniel had a dream. He saw a great statue. And that statue, the head of it was gold. The breast was silver. The waist was brass. The tie, the legs were iron. It was mighty. And then he saw a hand cut out a stone from a rock. And that stone smashed that statue and broke it to pieces. That statue is the kingdom of this world. Let me tell you what the kingdom of this world is. It's coronavirus. The kingdom of this world is the military of mighty nations. The kingdom of this world, biological, chemical weapons. The kingdom of this world I don't want to mention companies, some of those multinationals that their profit alone can eat up almost the, G, the entire resources of Africa. And he said, a stone caught without hands. How can a stone be caught without hands? That means what would destroy the kingdom of this war, terrorism, and all this extremism is not what people are thinking. God will have to give it to a church, not a church that is in a state of fear and in a state of reproach, a state that does not know his right from his left, which is what we currently have. It has to be the promoted church that will pass the exam. God will give some stones, say, go and kill the Goliath in your nation. God will give some 
a uh, sorry stones with um, catapult go and kill the Goliath. Some will give sto some a, a stone caught without hands go and smash this statue in your nation that is terrorizing and harassing you. And God is raising generals, sons, and mighty men in His kingdom. I'm not saying people that have large church. No, men that control heaven, the resources of heaven. They have the mandate of heaven at their shoulders. The kingdom, the government of heaven is on their shoulders. Their word is law. It does not fall to the ground. When they speak, heaven backs it. Whether God supports what they say or not, it will never fall to the ground. The Bible says the word of Samuel, it, does, it has nothing to do with whether it's right or not. Any word Samuel uttered in the Bible, it never fell to the ground. Never. God made sure there were angels assigned to him to execute everything that proceeded out of his mouth. We have come to that time again. Amen. Also Gideon in Judges 7, God said it's time to liberate your nation. It's time for the nations and the church to be liberated from the grip of those who are harassing us. It's not going to continue. I guarantee you, it will, a major, oh my goodness, a major move of God is coming that will end the, end the hold of the heathen and the harassment over the church, not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. The church is going to work. Their feet will sound like thunder when they move in the spirit. It will sound like thunder. Heathens will collapse before them. The power of God, people, the dead will be raised. I'm not talking about someone that just died one hour. People who have died, who have been buried for 21 days, some 40 days, their bodies will be exhumed back out and will be raised back to life. Those who have been beheaded will mold with mud another head and command life to return and they will return back. Then Jesus will come. Jesus is coming for a triumphant church, not a defeated church. Amen. And so, in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5, it says we are encouraged to test ourselves and make true assessment of ourselves. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. And I read, Examine yourselves, whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves and know if you are in the faith or you have turned to a reprobate. Eli told Hannah, Go in peace. The Lord grant you the desires of your heart. And Hannah had a son. That does not mean he lies with the Lord. He's already a reprobate without realizing. He knew he's a reprobate, but he still worked. So all the great men of God still doing all sorts and doing miracles. That doesn't mean they've tested and they're in order. They could be reprobates. And they're telling people to go in peace. And the people believe. And God honors their faith. And they get the miracle. But we should examine ourselves and be honest with ourselves. You can deceive people, but you cannot deceive yourself. So God says, while the test is coming, quickly test yourself. Make a true and a honest assessment of yourself. That will help you when the exam comes. That's why they say there's something they call mock exam. Mock exam is to help you make a true assessment of yourself before the true exam comes so that you can know that you are well prepared or you are not prepared. And if you know you are not prepared, then you quickly go and prepare. So God is asking the church, while your exam, your own exam is yet to come, quickly go and do a mock exam so that you can make a true assessment. Praise the Lord. So a test is a procedure intended to establish quality, performance, reliability of a thing before it is taken into use. It's an evaluation and observation of the genuineness of anything that is determined. I want to give you insights of what God may test you with since we're in an exam. So, if your child is preparing for an exam in school and you have what we call a lesson teacher in the house. The lesson teacher takes your child through subjects that they think might come out in your exam and says, 
If they ask you, most likely this is so so and so, is biology, the most likely is rare for them to do biology exam and not ask this area. So if they ask you this, what they're just trying to find out is this, this, this. So most likely, the first thing you must do is this. Amen. Excuse me. So what I want to do now, amen. <clears throat> so what I want to do right now is give you hints from the scriptures of different people that were tested in different ways and tell you paraventure, this is what the pandemic has created a scenario for you like this. During the pandemic, many people didn't have food and they were stranded and people were sending messages for people to help them to assist. And I believe by the Spirit of God, as a Christian, you should assist people. Especially if you have, this says to Abraham, I've made you, I've blessed you and I've made you a blessing. So we're blessed to be a blessing. But I know one area everybody will be tested is in food and drink. That food and drink means basic needs. And like the earlier um, minister said, as regards in 1 Samuel 17, the widow of Zarephath, she only had a handful left to eat for her and her son and die. She didn't go to beg from anybody. She was willing. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.